so many today who think God speak to them in an audibly way. We've already read Hebrews 1 and verse 1, God who has sundry times and in divers manner spake in time past. I don't deny that in times past God used various ways and various methods yes, to communicate his message. Yes, but we don't put a period right there. We keep on reading the verse. Half in these last days, he spoke unto us by his son. Right. Hebrews 10 and verse 7 says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Right. When God speaks to us today, he speaks through the medium of of this book. Yes, now I'm telling you, no other way, friend. Right. No other way. I realize and I recognize that in times past, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush, right. and the bush was not consumed. Exodus 3 and verse 2. He called Abraham by an angel. Genesis 22 and verse 15. He caused an iron head to swim. And communicated his message through that. 2 Kings 6, verses 6 and 7. He even calls a donkey to speak. Numbers 22 and verse 27. And communicated his message that way. But brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, God today only speaks through this book. He doesn't speak audibly today. Now I know when you hear that statement, the mind begins to quit. Because you hear people say, I just got a revelation from God. Or the Lord spoke to my spirit. Or I got a vision from God. I argue him. I don't know what you might be getting. But you're not getting it from God. Because the book said that stuff can stop. You're not getting that from God. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors. When God speaks to us today. He only speaks to us through this book. No other way, friend. No other way. Now, I also realize and I recognize in times past, even in the New Testament area, that God used various ways of communicating this message. We recognize and we realize during the apostles' days, we did not have the complete writing of the Bible. You had the inspired word on the inside of the inspired man. I realize and I recognize that. But that inspired word on the, inspired, on the inside of that inspired man was demonstrated for one to believe that he was from God through miraculous act. And I'm telling you something today. If Paul was here today, the first thing he would ask anybody, can you perform a miraculous act? That's what Paul wants to know. If God's speaking to you today, you ought to be able to perform a miraculous act. Now, in uh, Mark chapter 16, and verses 16 fall after Jesus commissioned these apostles to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, we realize and we recognize that it was demonstrated through miraculous acts. Through miraculous acts that one actually was from God. And these a 
of this sign. Yes, sir. What does it say? And this sign. And this sign. You know, they always pick just one. And I'll show you why. But the Bible doesn't say that. It says, and these signs. I'm not talking about that gibberish. I know you can do that. I know you can mumbo jumbo. I know you can do that. I know we, we, we in the Church of Christ today, we cut the Pentecostal preacher's head off when he act like he, when he claiming he's speaking in tongues, and that's good. But we ought to cut the same Church of Christ preacher's head off when they sing in tongues. Boom, did it, boom, 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 boom. Why is it a sin for the Pentecostal preacher to fake like he's speaking in tongues, and yet still we let all of these brothers get away and call themselves saying in tongues? Oh, that's consistent, isn't it? That's consistent, isn't it? Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, if it's wrong for a Pentecostal preacher to fake like he's speaking in tongues, then it's wrong for these church of Christ folk to sing in tongues. What's the difference in it for you? No difference at all. And these, yeah, I know you can mumbo jumbo, but you got to have all of them, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The nine goes together. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Oh, I wish I had that one. Because I start with Church of Christ preachers. I would love to cast the devil out of some of them. I would love to have. That's the first one I wrote. So I can cast the devil on a whole lot of God's folk. Can you cast that devil? What else up in there? Anything else up in there? They shall speak in unknown tongues. They shall speak in unknown tongues. The Bible says they shall speak in new tongues. There's no such thing as an unknown tongue. They shall speak it new, not unknown, new tongue. In order for a language to exist, at least two people got to understand it. They say nothing about no unknown. I know that word is italicized, it's been added for clarification. They shall speak it new tongues. And what else? They shall take up serpents. And if they take up snakes and get bit by one, like Paul did in Acts 27. Read. And they shall drink. Thing. Drink some caiman oil. <laughs> Drink some rice. Drink those poisons that, uh, that we have no antidote for. Those hemotoxins. Those neurotoxins. Those myotoxins. Those cytotoxins. Drink some of that. Drink some of that. <laughs> See what happened to you. Read. And it should not harm them. It shall not do anything to them. Well, why did God, Jesus Christ, endow these men with this miraculous activity? Read. That's all right, bro. Read. They shall lay 